Hey everyone, David Feinberg. Uh, hello to all of you. And I'm really excited about my conversation today with Dr. Ken Duckworth, who's the Chief Medical Officer for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Ken, maybe you could introduce yourself and the role you play at NAMI, and then we can kind of get into what we're both so excited about, about helping folks and families uh, deal with mental illness. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, NAMI, uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, is the largest grassroots organization of people who live with mental health conditions and those who love them. And this group has 650 chapters across America. So that's one first clue. If you're dealing with a mental health condition, you can contact a chapter in virtually every uh, city in America. And what we want to talk about today was what we're planning to do around anxiety disorders. And anxiety disorders, I don't think we could have picked a better time. Like the whole world is anxious. If you had an anxiety disorder coming into this, likely it's gotten worse. If you had an anxiety, if you didn't have an anxiety disorder before COVID, hey, it, it's definitely made all of us anxious because of the social isolation. So we have this new um, uh, thing that we're gonna put on Google, which is not new to the world, but new on Google, and it's in partnership with you around screening for generalized anxiety. So folks, not diagnostically, but would get an indication, hey, they need help. Um, can you talk to me about that idea of screening online and also about if they screen positive, what's out there for them? Well, thank you, uh, David. These are great questions. So a screening tool is simply that. It gives you a ballpark. So you don't want to get a diagnosis, uh, you know, other than with a licensed clinician who you're doing an assessment with. The field is doing a lot of Zoom assessments and treatment right now. Mental health field has pivoted quickly. So it's easier than you may think to get care uh, with an uh, independent clinician. Screening tools are helpful to give people the ballpark. Everybody knows what a good blood pressure should be. And many people have blood pressure cuffs in their home. And to me, a screening tool is another way to think about what level of functioning and impact is my anxiety having on me. I also think there's an empathy experience that people are having because all of us are experiencing some measure of dealing with unknowns, uncertains, uncertainties, and the potential for disruption in our lives. So I think uh, we appreciate anxiety and anxiety disorders in a way that I think many people didn't before. I think people do wonder about privacy when they're doing things like a Google search or a screening tool. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about how you're thinking about that with Google. Yeah. People do value their privacy. Absolutely. And so do we. And we build everything privacy first. So Got that's it. the same story with if you were to fill out a depression screening or an anxiety screener or a PTSD screener or mm -hmm. a COVID screener. We don't even need to know. We don't keep any of your answers. We, we don't, we just know somebody came to a screener. So you won't be sending me ads for Prozac or any related compounds if I took a screener. We will not be sending you an yeah. ad for Prozac if you took a screener. We, you know, we did some public service for mental health uh, awareness, um, kind of the same five ideas from a mental health standpoint, mm -hmm. where, you know, pause and take a breath, make sure you get sleep, like you mentioned, and mm -hmm. exercise, um, take a break from things like the news, if that's stressful, mm -hmm. you know, defining the difference between social isolation and social distancing, how to connect, mm -hmm. but also, and this was the last of that five, was if you're overwhelmed or unsafe, please reach out and get that's professional right. help. And so uh, uh, for those folks, um, wh where would you suggest they start? So if you're having problems with functioning, if your symptoms have had a duration, typically a week or two, uh, or if you're having thoughts of harming yourself or someone else, safety, those three big areas mean you should probably get an assessment. A couple routes, your primary care provider. They may have avenues for clinicians. Your health plan, there's usually a phone number on the back of your card, call them. And uh, it's their responsibility to help you find the help that you're already paying for with your monthly premium. Those are two routes that I think a lot of people don't know. Mental health care is quite decentralized in America. So individual practitioners are taking care of their 80 patients. They're not necessarily thinking about the public health need. So you may get some people who say, I can't see you. They won't call you back. Don't take that personally. Once you get into care with someone, you're likely to get very good care.
So I'm always concerned about, are we doing a good job of making mm. sure we don't have misinformation? Yeah, I, think, I don't want people to catastrophize. And so I want to get the right information to the right people, but obviously there's a lot of information out there. So are there times where you think we could do better? We'd love to improve. That's a great question. And uh, I have patients come to me who've Googled information. Uh, hey, Dr. Ken, here's cognitive behavior therapy. Is that a thing that you do or can I do it online? I learned about this on Dr. Google. You know, this medication, is it particularly effective? It's FDA approved, but is the other like medicine just as good? Uh, so what one thing that's very positive is think that the information age has created the opportunity for people to be more informed. But my job and your job, David, you know, is to help people sort you know, uh, the many data points from what might actually be effective for them. And our job is to make sure that we have authoritative information that comes up first, so that that's what you're saying, mm -hmm. the information you're talking about. Now, however, we got to make that information engaging. So yeah. I talk, when I talk about vaccines, for example, um, the, the people that are against vaccines put really engaging stuff out on YouTube. And mm. I say, and pediatricians are still handing out pamphlets. Right. right? So we, we, we've got to get to where we engage with people with authoritative information in a way that captures them. So we're, uh, in my opinion, combating the other stuff that isn't medically as sound. This has been a great partnership. I really look forward to us launching this uh, this month. Um, and uh, I think it's actually on top of some previous partnerships. So we got a lot to do to improve access to mental health care, to improve understanding for mental health care, to improve treatment, to really love and help those caregivers and families that take care of folks. Mm. And uh, you can count on our partnership with you. So really, really great to connect with you, Ken. I'm grateful for that. I want to emphasize what you said about caregivers. NAMI has a family to family program, which is one uh, randomized controlled trial gold status, you know, that basically uh, parents and family members feel more engaged, more hopeful, more empowered uh, in terms of how they love someone and can uh, work with somebody who has um, a mental health vulnerability. And I want to mention the NAMI basics program, because a lot of mental health problems, particularly anxiety disorders, start with kids. And NAMI basics is a six week on demand program, which reviews all the things that have to do with child and adolescent mental health challenges, completely online. You can completely run it on your own time. And I feel like, you know, those are good uh, resources and I'm grateful for the collaboration because people do turn to Google for information. And then I'm grateful that you've selected us to be one of your partners in the important and growing mental health space.